welcome. I am Kimberly with At Home With She Can Grace. Um, this is my very first YouTube video, so I might be a little bit nervous, fumble over my words a little bit, so forgive me. Um, but just let me explain a little bit of what you can see um, on my videos going forward. So I love everything DIY and home decor. So like today we're gonna make some cute drop cloth carrots. Um, I've got a few made here, but I'm going to show you exactly how I did them. Um, I do lots of different crafts. I do uh, silk screening, sublimation, painting, watercolor, we build signs, we, we do all the things you see behind me. So I will be sharing lots of that in the near future. Well, in the future. We also love to tackle DIY decor. So projects, I've got lots of different projects from finishing furniture pieces to we've got a pantry build coming in the future here. So lots of things, making over a bathroom, we have got lots of things to share in the near future. So today, like I said, we're going to make these carrots. Um, I am I'm gonna show you how I made these with bleached drop cloth and some chalk couture. I don't know if you've heard of chalk couture or not, but some chalk couture stencils. I've got a couple of them here. You can also go right on to, and I'll drop links for you. You can go right onto the website and you can actually buy a kit um, that has fabric already included, has a couple silk screen transfers um, and some chalk paste and a cute little box and tags. I have just made everything without that kit with leftover supplies that I already had at home because I didn't get the kit. Um, not that I didn't want to, I actually completely forgot about it and then I thought it was too late and by the time I got this video out it was going to be too late for you to order it as well. But I will post that link below. And just so as you know, I am um, a chalk couture designer so the link would go to my website um, just want a full disclosure out there for you so I'm also because I'm using things from at home um, this transfer here is out of stock like you can't get it anymore and that's what I did these two carrots with but there are so many other patterns out there that you can use and I didn't realize that I couldn't get it anymore until I did it um, but this bl bloom one and you'll see I've used this bloom one before um, with some other projects and it's really cute. Uh, you can do it on signs, you can do it on pillows, it can be done on trays, but then we are going to, sorry for all the noise there, should have had these out earlier. We are gonna use this on one of the carrots too. So I'm gonna make two more carrots. Um, I used a mixture of eucalyptus paste, and I have to grab it, sorry, I forgot to get it. Um, they have a shimmer eucalyptus that I did just, I don't even know if you can see on there, but there's some shimmer in this carrot um, in some of them, but I did just this messy effect. So I will show you kind of blended. It's almost ombre. Um, I did the same thing with this guy using, I am so sorry. Let me grab this. Thought I was so organized for you guys, and uh, I wasn't. Okay, so Shimmering Eucalyptus. I knew this was a different name. Um, Shimmer Melon and Sunset Drive. So I blended these two together. Those are the two colors I'm going to do right now. Um, I'm not going to do the Eucalyptus because I've already done three of them. I'm going to do two more of these Peach Guys. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of get these out of out of the way and then I'm going to show you um, how I made the little five cent tags. I actually, and I forgot to look to see if this one is available. I, for some reason, don't think this is available either, but I just took the little five cents off of 
um, this other silk screen transfer. It was part of a bathroom collection. And then I just did it on a little tag and we're gonna tie it onto the carrots. I also made this little tag. Um, this is not with chalk couture. I made this silk screen myself. So, um, but I just got these little tags. Gosh, I don't even remember where I got them. I probably bought them at Michael's or something. They're pretty rough cut. I just sanded them down, painted them with some chalk paint and then the chalk paste on there. They're kind of a little bit big, but when you have, you know, three carrots sitting, I'm going to show you how I design all this stuff up, but when you have like three carrots sitting, they'd be really cute to just kind of hang off the side there. So when the video is all done, I'm going to share with you how I use this stuff in my own home decor. Okay, so we're going to get started here. I have just taken and let me grab a tape measure here because I didn't measure any of these. I just eyeballed them. But just in case, they're nine and a half inches wide at the top and they're about eight and three quarters long. But I just eyeballed them and cut them. I liked to use the frayed edge. I don't know if you can, this is one you can see really good. I even frayed along this edge some more where I glued it. And I don't like my, um, the tops to be all even. So I'm gonna show you how when I rolled them up before I hot glued them, how uneven they actually look up top here. And I frayed all the edges on there too. And I just realized all my greenery that I wanted to use on these is way over there. So I will have to grab those as well. So I've got, five cut out here just because I was cutting and I thought I might as well cut more, but we're only going to do two. Okay. So before I do that, you can fray these edges. That's a smidge more. I just run my fingernail down them and fray them up a little bit more. I did do this after I um, chalked on them as well. And if you're familiar with chalk couture, uh, you'd know that on fabric, you can actually use the ink to make it um, permanent, but I don't plan on washing these. So these are permanent. So you don't have to use the ink, but by all means, if you want to use the ink, use the ink. It just takes a little bit longer for it to dry. You can heat set it. You don't have to uh, because you're not washing them, but ink you always want to want a heat set with an iron okay but because you're not washing them you just stick with the paste and you actually don't even need to fray the edge that I'm fraying right now but just in case I roll it up backwards fraying it and let's just get this guy frayed as well you'll notice like he doesn't always fray um, evenly, like if you notice he doesn't fray evenly just because um, we're fraying the edge that's cut on the diagonal. Okay. I will make sure to list all the supplies that I use down in the description as well. Oh, didn't turn my hot glue on. Now I'm using um, a really fine tip hot glue just because I want um, to roll, like to roll this, it's pretty fine at the end to roll it. So I like the little um, fine tip of that one. Okay, so that can heat up and I just wanna move some of these things so that they are out of the way because when this is done, I'm gonna wanna scoot it to the side really quick. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my paste out. I've already got a couple squeegees. Now, a little trick I like to do is just roll it over. Now, this doesn't have to go on straight, so 
unless you want them to go straight up and down but the last ones I did I let them go on a diagonal so I'm going to lay this down on the diagonal here and then I'm going to flip it over you don't have to leave it on the backer sheet here but when I'm working with big transfers oh it's just so much easier to leave them on the backer sheet okay you'll want to press down get all the air bubbles out so you have no bleeding with your stencil you do have to give a fair bit of pressure um, when you are putting your chalk paste down um, especially on your drop cloth now as i was mentioning before i bleach this i bleach it because one, I like it to just give it a little bit of a lighter color, but it softens and makes this material just more pliable and more easier to use. I find um, that even just washing it and drying it does that. It does come out fairly um, wrinkly, so sometimes you have to iron it, but if you would do it in sections, like I'll take my, my big drop cloth and I'll cut it into sections sometime and do that, and then I can lay it out to dry you get minimal wrinkles and then I'll just toss it in the dryer to freshen it up. So just a little, just a little tip. Okay. I always like to have baby wipes handy after this because I will make a mess. So just getting those out and ready. So I'm just going to dip in, get to the bottom of my shimmer melon here and I'm just going to randomly glide this on and like I said you do have to press a good amount here and this fabric is going to soak it up too so okay do a little bit over here Then I'm going to go into, this one is Sunset Drive. I always forget the name of it. It's just not in my brain yet. Okay, and fill in all the other areas. If this does come out a little rustic, looking and as rustic, I mean, if it's not full coverage in every spot, I'm okay with that. I shouldn't have any bleeding, but in the event that I do, I'm also gonna be okay with that because we can roll it and cover it up a bit. I am just gonna take my finger. These colors are so close together that you really don't have to do this, but if you're using two different colors you wanted to ombre together, this just helps soften your squeegee lines. Okay. I have no excess on here. I've taken it all off already. So here we go. Oh, I actually see where I didn't even put paste there. So let's uh, see how we did. Oh yeah. Now, as you're lifting up, if you see spots, you will probably be able to see this on camera. Sorry, I can't lift it up. If you see spots where you're like, oh, I'd like a little bit more coverage, just gently lay it back down, press a little harder. It's all good. Yeah, there's another little bit too. Um, right here, that, your shimmer, you always have to press more. Always, always, always. Okay. If you have any questions about this in the comments, guys, just any questions, leave a comment. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Okay. This is what it looks like. So I could have laid it back down right there. It's wet. So um, I could have laid it down right back there, but that's okay because that is most likely going to be hidden when I roll this up. So. I am just going to take this guy 
lay him down here so he can start to dry. And this, you don't want to let your paint, um, you don't want to let these stencils, these silk screen stencils sit in water anymore. Um, the newer ones, you used to be able to take and just set them in the water for a little bit. Um, and you also don't really want it to dry in there. I mean, they can dry in there. It's not going to hurt. It's just easier to clean it. But I like to, when I'm down here, I just like to give it a little quick spray of water, set it to the side, get my next one done, and then I'll just go up and clean them. Okay, so cleaning that guy. I'm going to pull this other guy out. Now there's some script on here, um, not that you can read it, but you might just want to make sure that it's pointing up. Really at the end of the day, you can barely even tell um, on these carrots. So, but it just adds a little something, something. So now you've probably noticed too, I'm using non-traditional carrot colors. It's because this is what I decorate with. Um, so, and I just really wanted nice pastel looking uh, carrots. All right, so I'm not really going to pay too much attention to where this is getting laid down. So as long as there is no air bubbles, it can be pretty random. So I've almost got it in the middle. All right. I have used this silk screen so many times. There's not a lot of stick left on it, but it still works. Like I've done so many pillows with this. I've done complete trays. I did a full edge of a tray, like all the sides with it. Um, yeah, I've done many, many, many. So little tip when it's not sticking very much anymore, try to just go in one direction. Try not to go in as many directions as I did the first time. So, and I like then to kind of start in the middle and work my way out. And then you just don't, you don't get any bleeding then. Or if you do, it's extremely minimal. But for the most part, you can use these stencils even after their stick is gone. I have had no problems. You just don't want it to, you want to get all your air bubbles out and you just don't want it to move around. Okay, and I'm gonna swap over to the solid color. Actually, let's get some over here. You can see a little bit more. Okay, now we'll uh, finish up with the non shimmer one. Normally, if these were different colors too, I wouldn't be re dipping in there. I'd have a little spatula and scooping it out, but honestly, it's not going to affect this at all because they are so close in color. But notice how I am <laughs> trying to go mainly one direction for the most part, and that is really going to help with the bleeding. Um, well, hopefully we won't get any bleeding, right? Just because this is not sticking as well as it used to. Okay. Clean my fingers off. And let's pull this one off. Oh yes, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. A couple spots where I could have pressed a little bit harder, but I'm okay with these looking this way. And it's really just a spot, kind of, got a string here. Just a little spot there and a little spot there. Could have pressed harder, but I wasn't worried about it, so I didn't even look when I was pulling it up. Okay, I'm just gonna just spray that a little bit. I'm gonna pause for a second, guys. I am going to take these up, 
clean them out, let these two dry, and when we come back, we're gonna assemble. All right. Hey, so I'm back. Um, doesn't take very long for these to dry at all. Like, it probably took me five minutes to clean my stencils out um, and get them sitting to dry. But if you wanted to speed it up, just use like um, a heat gun on a low temp and uh, just fan it over a little bit. It'll, it'll dry it really quick. Ink takes a lot longer. So if you are using ink, you can still use like a heat gun to dry your ink, but um, it does take a lot longer. Okay, so um, when I did these first little carrots, I used some older, um, like a white garden string to tie them up. You can use jute too. Either is cute and is going to work. I just really liked that um, white on white look, but I'll tie one up with jute so you can see what it looks like. So if you have like extra little stringies here, Feel free to pull them off or leave them on. I'll just pull that one a little bit here. Okay, so I think that I'm gonna roll this one this way. So you want to start at the tip here with just a little bit of hot glue and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I just have a little tiny bit there and I'm just going to roll really tightly until I am just over that tip. Hold it. Now, now I'm good. So before I glue any more, I want you to see how much I'm overlapping because I like that look. So then that's what kind of gives you that extra fullness up on the top. If you don't like that, that's okay. Cut it off. Just, just straighten it out and cut it off. Sometimes they overlap more than others. Like I don't have to overlap it that much and I just have a fatter carrot is all. Um, that's just the look that I like. So. I'm going to continue as close to my frayed edge as possible. Probably, it's hard to, to do this. Um, and so you can see it on camera. So let me see. Maybe once I get going a little bit more, we'll have some overhead videos. All right, so I probably didn't even need to go up that far, but there is a first carrot. Okay, so gonna just um, glue the second one before we stuff it, okay? So this I want to be my top. That was already the frayed edge. That's um, the frayed edge that happens in the wash. Okay. I am so sorry, you are going to hear my dog howling. Um, I had ran upstairs really quick when I was, um, just after I finished washing the silk screens out and gave her a treat. And then I wasn't even thinking, she likes to, to howl a lot after she gets a treat. So, <laughs> oops, I, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I didn't roll this tight enough, so I'm just putting a little extra glue down at the bottom, just so as I don't have, have a hole there. Okay, there we go. Just run my glue. I love this little glue gun, let me tell you. I'm in Canada, for those of you that don't know, and you can't get this linen lily sure bonder up here but i did call the sure bonder company and they gave me a price quote and um i ordered it because i really like how fine it is i do some other things that i really like to have the fine tip for and 
fine tip and cordless like plus it's pretty right I'm sure I could have found one but if you're gonna spend the money why not make it pretty okay so these are good I've got my bag of stuffing here okay I'm gonna pause for a second otherwise she's gonna keep up this howling Okay, the howling seems to be done. Hopefully it is. So I've just got some um, batting here. And I, hard to, it's hard to get it down into that tip, but just put a little bit in to start with. Um, Cause if you put a whole bunch in there, you're just never gonna get it pushed down into that tip. Um, but just that little bit that I put in there, actually that guy is not working. This guy works better. Um, and then you can, you just have an easier time when you are getting small, like a small amount of stuffing down there, just into that tip. After that, you're good to just start stuffing and they don't need to be overly full. Like some of them, this guy hardly got anything in the bottom. But this guy, he's stuffed, like, I mean, he's glued until there, right? So you get the, the a feel of it. This guy doesn't have much stuffing in the bottom either. You can't tell. So let's you make them as full or as soft as you want them. So I'm stopping about an inch from the top, I would say, so that I've got room to tie it up. Just gonna stuff the next guy. I've got like a hot glue going on here. So, so just again, I just want to get a little bit in there. Stuff it as far down. Whoops, I didn't stuff it down enough. I find this the rectangle end of this squeegee actually works really good. Sometimes these. Um, rounded ends just go right through it okay just gonna stuff a wee bit more there we go now we're on a roll okay the rest of it could pretty much just be done with my fingers felt like I had a little spot there that nothing was there was no stuffing okay I didn't make this guy's fat oh you can see my cat here. This is Bean. I'm sure she's gonna try to walk right in front of the camera. All right, so I'm not gonna do this, but a little trick is if you have little tiny elastics, go ahead, put a little tiny elastic on there before you, um, before you tie it up, okay? So this spool of thread is so old, you guys. My grandma gave it to me probably 20 years ago, I'm still using it. So let's see here. So what I did actually feel like I want just a teensy bit more in here. He was feeling not very full on the top. There, that's better. Okay. So I just gathered it up and I just, just pinched it up and I just took my thread, my string, it's not thread, wrapped it around and then holding it, I just wound it really, really tight. I don't even know how many times I went around that, seven or eight. I'm just moving the fabric a little bit here because we still got to stick um, our stem in there, but there's lots of room. Just gonna give this a little tie. Just a little knot. You could tie it in a bow. I'll tie the other one with jute so you can see the difference. I cut these quite short 
And then what I did was I just twisted the string in between my fingers to made it, make it look a little bit more frayed. Okay, so these little picks are, um, oh gosh, I don't even remember where I got them. Walmart or Michaels, one or the other. I can't recall, but I've been cutting them apart for a little while here. So let's see, this one, we'll use this one because I like it when it has these little sprigs and the two leaves. It doesn't have to be like that, but let's just cut that off and make sure that it'll fit and then I'll put some hot glue in there. Oh yeah. Perfect. You probably, if you didn't want to, you wouldn't even have to hot, hot glue that. You could just leave it just like that. But otherwise, just take some hot glue and um, stick it in there. I'm just going to leave it because this is tight enough. Like I really had to, to push that guy in there. So I'm just going to leave that one. Um, and then let's find... This guy is what we will use for the next one. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pop these in here so that they're out of the way. We'll get a little bit of jute here. Got some scraps of some thin jute. I'm gonna use it to um, tie this one up just so as you can see see the difference uh, I'm gonna feel like I didn't stuff these enough so then when I go to tie them I want more in there yeah there we go that feels good so I'm gonna do the same thing just pinching it up with my fingers it's gonna get that string that jute started and just pulling pretty tight as I'm going around it and then I'll tie it in a knot right here you could tie it in a bow afterwards if you'd like to I'm just gonna spread the top of it out a little bit stuff this in there yeah and again I've got it so nice and tight that I don't even have to put glue in there but you can I just know that um, they're just going to be laying there, right? So they don't need to have any any glue in them. And if I feel like I don't have a frayed enough edge here, now that it's glued together, you can just run your finger up and down and fray it up a little bit more. So I like to actually lay mine down so that you can see the frayed edge. Um, So then you might want to turn your jute a little bit if you want to see. And let's see if you want to see the jute and the frayed edge. Let's just see what a little bow looks like on this guy. Oh yeah. I'm just I always like to just twist the ends of string and jute just to fray them up just a little bit. Um, we'll cut this guy off a little bit more. And then we'll do the same. Just fray him up just a smidge. Oh yes. <laughs> she has to uh, be in there to get the pieces that are falling all the time. So you can have a cute little bow. You can just leave it with just the jute. I mean the string. Okay. And then get this out of the way. You can go ahead and you can tie the little carrots 25 cents each on or you could tie on the little five cent one and you can make multiples of these. These are just little cutouts of MDF 
I just painted them all up with chalk paint so there's not even a hole in it yet. And then, oh, here it is, I forgot. So then I have, um, oh my goodness, uh, what are these things called? It's like we are memory keepers, but they um, punch holes. So then I just, actually, I'll show you. I just put it in there and with the bigger side of it, it's where I want it and just punches your hole. And that's like what came out. There's my hole. And then you can punch a hole before or after. I um, put the five cents on here first using the silk screen the exact same way. And I used storm paste. Um, and then I punched my hole afterwards. So, uh, so that's that guys. Thank you for joining me on my very first YouTube video. Please feel free to leave any comments um, in the bottom. Nice comments, of course. <laughs> um, any questions if you have, if you need to know any other information. And I will have some photos here coming up shortly to show you how I style these cute little carrots in my home. So see you next time. Bye.